Well, good morning, God first, and uh, you guys are allowed to uh, express your welcome by applauding or something like that, so, um, and online, guys, good to have you with us on YouTube, those of us who are joining us, I know it's a beautiful day out there, isn't it, but we've got our, well, feels like automatically air-cooled building, and we've got Pete and Kim Carter with us, so we can welcome them, and uh, Pete's going to be uh, preaching later, Pete and Kim were, were both with us uh, with a leadership gathering we did in a church, probably 50 or 60 of us gathered in this beautiful hall, set out in a completely different way. So well done to everyone who's put that back together. Brilliant. Um, children's, children's work is happening, and uh, that's, that's happening right now. Uh, youth, you are staying in for the whole time, those of you young people who are in the room. And um, we are going to, right now, just get straight into worship. I want to get us to stand in the room and uh, we think as of tomorrow we will actually uh, should feel different here even even next week so we'll, we'll see what any other announcements are happening yeah uh, and freedom day is coming we trust um i felt this morning just a couple of things that we we to just be sensitive to what the father is doing and i felt that we're going to see what the father wants to do with us this morning mark's going to lead us in worship with a band and we'll see what the father wants to do but i also felt like he wants to mark us with his presence uh, and uh, so I think for some of us, it's, it's just a, a moment of encounter, even this morning, wherever we are, in our lounges at home or in this building, you know, God is a God uh, who uh, kind of transcends all of that, and he comes imminently to be with us. So I'm going to pray. Who wants to meet with the Lord? Oh, three of you. you can, <laughs> you're waving. Who wants to meet with the Lord? Yes. And at home I can see you, I see you waving. So Lord, we just welcome you in this place. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord, uh, really across the nations and hearing of your uh, healing power breaking in and doing all that you're doing. Thank you, God, that you're, you're the Lord, you're the King. And we say, Lord, come by your spirit this morning in these strange days where we feel like we still have to wear masks, still kind of can't gather how we want to gather, can't really sing yet in this building. And yet, Lord, I pray that worship would well up, that you would be uh, exalted, that your presence would be imminent and resting upon us. I pray that you would mark us with your presence, that you would saturate us uh, with your presence, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, let's worship the Lord. Mark, thank you. Morning. We're going to run into his presence this morning. We're going to celebrate. We're going to lift him up. Praise him, you heavens and all that's above. Praise Him, you angels in heaven.
capture fully your greatness and your awesomeness. Lord, you have done so much for us. We love your name. We want to worship you today. Lord, give us a, a greater glimpse of your glory this morning. Lord, we have grasped some of who you are, but we want to see more of who you are. Lord, you are glorious. You are great. You are awesome. You are powerful. You are wonderful. You are our saviour. You are the victor. Jesus. free. 
sing my soul. My soul is alive with worship. I'm singing again because my heart overflows with the love and mercy of you, my God. My soul is alive with wonder. I'm welcomed again. out to the Lord together, welcome him into your hearts. Lord, we love your presence. Lord, we love to sing of all that you've done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you're here with us. You were the word in the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. I love that. You were the word in the beginning, one with God the Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name.
What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, failed to before you, silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no
So beautiful, Lord. You have no equal. You have no rival. All the kingdoms of the earth belong to you. All creation belongs to you. It sinks to you. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. song we could ever sing 
worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Just as we're singing these songs, let's allow the Lord just to rest on us. I, the scripture talks about, Paul talks about in Ephesians, that there's a spirit of revelation. And I, I feel like the Lord wants to bring a revelation today for those of us here, those of us at home, wherever we are, watching, listening, worshipping. And it's a revelation of the, the king being king. It's a revelation of the fact that Jesus is friend of sinners. He's also the King of Kings. He's not another name amongst many names of authority. He's the one with all authority. I feel like as we're singing about the name of Jesus, the, the one who's above it all, the one who is worthy, there's a spirit of revelation that reveals the lion of the tribe of Judah roaring with all authority over every situation, over every sickness, over every challenge, over every issue, that it's not Jesus against that issue, it's Jesus over it, it's Jesus uh, fundamentally, his kingdom rule, his kingly rule. I believe there's healing in this place, so we can kind of see the Lord sweeping across this place. And wherever we are, home as well, there's healing, because he's king, he's victorious, he rose from the dead. The king came to, from heaven to earth, walked on earth, died on a cross, rose from the dead, and is seated in all victory. He's been king throughout all eternity. He's never changed. He's always king. King Jesus. He's a servant king, but he's king. He's a tender king, but he's king. Maybe that you don't know Jesus and he's calling you home. He's calling you to a place to bring your life under the submission of his lordship, his kingly rule, his cleansing, his salvation. And all you need to do is draw near and say, Jesus, I want you to be king of my life. And so we just pray right now and declare that you are king. That we, as it were, fall face down we declare you are king declare that you are king king over every every challenge every situation we say Lord you're king of this church you're king of this town you're king of this nation you're king of the nations you're Lord over this pandemic you're Lord over everything that's shaking. In fact, you're the one who shakes it. You're the king. And yet in the shaking, you can speak peace and calm the storm. Come, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
ask just in your hearts, wherever you are, ask the Lord for his kingly rule to be expressed in the thing that, that you want him to meet you in. imminently and he's transcendent all at once he's a God who can speak in a moment to a nation and bring peace and yet equally come to you in your life and help you with that worry that concern that issue that thing that's burdening you my yoke is easy the Lord says my burden is light hallelujah amen amen do take a seat brilliant do you know, I said there, I prayed something, I'm not even sure I agree with myself, that he shakes it. I think, do you know what I really think? I think as things shake, he's in control, he's sovereign. And we've got to hold that in our own lives and uh, it, for, the light, for the nations of the world as well as we pray. So it's good to know God is wonderfully in control, isn't it? So yeah, hallelujah. You can applaud the, why don't we applaud King Jesus? Why don't we do that? It's good. Um, I've got one, one thing to say and then one introduction to make because I'm going to get Pete up here to preach. Is one thing to say is that we are going to receive our offering now. Lots of that now is being done through um, electronic giving and we don't pass a bucket round anymore. But I think the principle is true that, that somehow in our giving of our finance, there's worship that is expressed to the king. And so many of you are now looking around, uh, our, our generous givers. Uh, well, I know that from month by month as we look at we, what we're doing and how we're able to continue continue to do it. So thank you for your regular generosity. Some of us may not have had opportunity to give before. You can do that. You can go to our website uh, and give that way and it will be uh, used to lift the name of Jesus up. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you Mark and worship team by the way for leading us. Fantastic. Um, yeah, you can applaud them. Um, We've, um, we've had Pete and Kim Carter staying with us for the weekend. As I said at the start of this, we've uh, had a leadership kind of day. We call it in a grand, it sounds grandiose, a leadership summit. And Pete and Kim were ministering at that and leading us uh, in some of what they carry. And you might not have come across these guys. I can tell you they carry something in God. Uh, and already I, I feel like, wow, there's stuff that I want to explore more, hear more about. We run out of time at breakfast this morning and have to run to church. Can you believe it? Uh, and uh, kind of, uh, so we're going to get these guys, uh, again, get Pete up on his feet uh, to preach to us now. So Pete, all the way from Kent, Eastgate Church, can you come up here and minister? And you just feel so, just be so welcomed and feel free. So I'm going to change the lection. So let's, let's give him a welcome. Make sure I have some of you on that camera, so those of you who are watching this online at home or maybe later in the week might be out walking and getting it online whenever you're accessing it. just want to say thanks for the privilege of coming to be with you. I always uh, love, love giving what give, God's given to us to other people because that's how the kingdom works, eh? So, um, and all we've got, we've got by the grace of God. Um, and... Uh, you know, there's diligence in stewarding what God gives you. That's really important. You're responsible for things God gives you to actually steward them well. Not so you have them for yourselves, but you give them to other people and the kingdom expands. Um, so I've got so many things I'd love to say, but I'm going to be keep myself disciplined because I know we've got sort of time. And uh, <clears throat> Freedom Day comes tomorrow. Now, 
No, but, no, but you should be more excited than that, I reckon. I, 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 you know, I've, I've been wearing one of these things. In I get the privilege of not wearing these ones while I preach. I, I kind of like that, so that's good. But um, we'll be back in, in uh, our own church, Eastgate in, in uh, Kent, up near Gravesend, Dartford, actually in Ebbsfleet Garden City, the newest city in the UK, um, which we have the privilege of serving uh, as a community centre and developing community across that whole area of development, which is a huge story and a huge privilege. And um, yeah, and I just love God. I love my wife. Um, it's our wedding anniversary tomorrow. Um, so we are, we're actually staying down. Uh, it, it is lovely and hot by the sea, so we thought we'd enjoy that. So we're enjoying being here. And then we'll uh, make our way back up to, to, our <coughs> to Kent sometime later on Monday. But, and um, just wanted to commend you as a church. Um, commend you, and I'm commending leaders, just our interaction with you has been uh, thoroughly enjoyable, uh, but also just the way that you uh, open your hearts to, to learn. And my definition of humility, the most important thing, is the willingness to learn. Um, humility is not denying what you've already learned. It's not saying I, I'm no good or anything. It's actually saying I've got further to go in my journey, and, and I want to learn from other people. And the willingness to learn from others. Um, and that learning isn't, isn't uh, what I call dictation. I'll say some things, you weigh it up. It's up to you whether you choose to take it in and be part of your life, you know, because it's, it's like a good meal. You, you, you want to digest what's going on. Um, I think I'm on pretty safe territory this morning, though, so I'm not going to be too controversial. I, I can be controversial, but before I go any further, I just feel... Um, I want to just throw out some words of knowledge with regard to healing, um, and I'm going to do some more at the end when I finish preaching. I'm going to do more around. I want to release an anointing for healing, not just. I like seeing people healed, yeah, in church meetings, and I see a lot of that. But actually, I'm more interested in seeing you equipped to go and heal in your daily lives. That, that's the bit that really excites me. I think you know, I, I, <clears throat> I don't do healing so you can just come to a meeting, Christian meeting, and get healed. That's not the kingdom. The kingdom is actually you are equipped. And if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit inside you. That, that's basic theology. Everybody agreed on that one? I'm looking at you, madam, there. Got the Holy Spirit inside you? Is he powerful? Does he do miracles? Therefore, you can do miracles. Why? Because he's in you. It's as simple as that. Christianity is quite simple, really. Um, and you've actually got no excuse because you've got God inside you. It's basically very simple. So, so when and God spoke to me, I thought, okay. Oh, this, and he's, I thought, oh, goodness, this is a long list to fit into 25 minutes. So, um, anyway, so I'm going to throw some out because what, what I know is that um, some of you all been already been touched by God during the worship. Where, where God's presence is, his activity is manifest. And that's one of the things we love at Eastgate. Is people just get healed in our worship times on a, on a pretty regular basis. Um, and uh, we just enjoy seeing you know, people come in and... My premise is, if you touch Jesus, you can get healed. And the most common way we touch him is in worship, isn't it? So don't be surprised when people get healed during worship. So already some of you will have been touched. Um, uh, I'm also a medical doctor, so I sometimes uh, you know, understand the language of that. So, um, but I'm just going to throw this out. This, this, is, this will be relevant for people in the room here and, and those on, uh, watching online, but also maybe people watching later. It's not limited to a moment in time. So there's, there's uh, at least one, if not more than this, for each one of these. Um, so there's somebody, and I think this is quite specific, probably one person, but might be one, with a spleen problem. Um, and I don't want to explain that medically. If you've got it, you'll know it, okay? It's a problem with your spleen. Um, thumb problems. <coughs> um, there's a condition called polymyalgia rheumatica. Uh, uh, glaucoma. Um, anybody who's got a problem with knees and asthma. Now, what I want you to do is actually say, okay, I identify that, or even actually I know somebody with that, and I want you just to take hold of it as a word of, of uh, knowledge coming out to you. Now, what, what words of knowledge from God are for are, are to generate faith in you. They're not magic. <laughs> but they're an opportunity. And, and faith comes by hearing the word of God. God says, I'm just highlighting these things. He, he heals all things. It's not that this is the limited edition for today. This is, this is a stimulus to your faith. So, oh, God, God's, God understands me. Okay, So if you've got any of those things... Even when I'm, I want you to just keep listening to me, please don't turn off, that wouldn't be nice to me, but um, uh, just keep listening. And as you, as you listen, because listening is an act of worship, isn't it? When you're listening to the Word of God, that's, that's, it's, that's, we worship God with our minds. It's not just the musical bit that's worship. All of our lives is, is worship. I believe God's going to hear me. And I've got some other things but, um, for later on. 
um, in, in, including, I think, a, a mobile phone number, which I'm always a bit nervous about giving out one of those, but <laughs> in, its enti- in, in its entirety. So, but, oh, okay. <laughs> it's when God wakes me up, and I've got the numbers 07, I thought, oh, here we go again. 07 is just not specific enough, is it? You know, it, it, uh, <laughs> thanks, God. <laughs> what's, what's the rest? Okay, so. Um, Romans 14, verses 17 and 18 say this. About the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> and I, I'm presuming you're quite familiar with this, okay? So... The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. Okay. The context of that is when they were sort of having some debate about which food you could eat, what you shouldn't eat, um, and how don't use your freedom of conscience to override other people's uh, uh, conscience in, in those, those areas. Actually, that's not, it's not a regulation thing, actually. We, we love one another, and we behave with one another to love, and we don't access the kingdom of of heaven, the kingdom of God, by obeying rules and regulations. That's what it's saying. It's, that, that's basically what it's saying. So you have not got a rules and regulations. There's, there's no tick list you can do to make sure you can access the resources of heaven. The resources of heaven are, are, are available to you because of what Jesus has already done. Okay? It's not that you try and attain to them, but you, you take hold of what has already been given. Um, every Christian, if you read in Ephesians 1, has, has already been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. That's an extraordinary statement. And then I look at my own life and thought, have I taken hold of all that yet? Well, no. Um, and I have a very simple way of thinking about this. If God is infinite and eternal, then there is no way I've reached the end of what he has to offer me. It's as simple as that. So, so when people say, well... <clears throat> how are you doing in your Christianity? I say, well, this is where I am today, and hopefully tomorrow I'll know more. That's, pr- that's, that, that's, that's right. So wherever I am today, I'm happy with what I've learnt, but God has actually <clears throat> so much for me that I want to... That. So, so people say, how much of heaven are you experiencing? You want me to go this way because I'm not going off screen? Is that, well, I'm, do you want me to pull this this way? So I'm getting the hieroglyphics from that. You want me there? Right, right. How far can I wander? I'm a wanderer, sorry about that. So if you're watching on screen and I just disappeared, that's my fault. <laughs> <coughs> um, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Some people say, how much of heaven do you think you can experience on earth? I said, hmm, it's an odd, odd question because it's not a finite reality. It's not as if, if I use it all up here, there won't be much left for me when I get there. It's, it's an odd question. I don't know if you've ever had that question, Duncan. You ever say, oh, do you expect too much on earth. No, I just expect more. I, I, I refuse to put a limit on the pot- potential of Christianity here on earth, and I know once I get to heaven in the old reality, there'll be another degree of glory to go into. But So, <clears throat> um, so it's not a matter of that, but it's, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, that's, a, that's a very interesting summary of the kingdom of heaven, which I'm just going to try and unpack in the few, you know, short time I've got, but it's and I'm not frightened of that short time because I can do a lot in it, but it's the sense of, I want to throw out some stuff at you that will give you an understanding of what righteousness is, which I think is often misunderstood. Um, and then, it, what is interesting, verse 18 says this, because anyone who serves Christ in this way, so in what way? Understanding righteousness, peace and joy, living that out in your life, is pleasing to God and, this is really fascinating, receives human approval. Now, what is important is, it, we're not then we're not designed as Christians to be seeking the approval of men. We're not men, men pleasers. And that's right, the Bible tells us not to do that. But if you pursue the kingdom of heaven in this way, what will happen is that humanity will notice what you do. And they will come and find you. Did people come and find Jesus? <laughs> he didn't have to do much advertising, did he? What? People flocked him. Why? And you read the history of Christianity, a place where people flock to. Why? Because God is there. And something's happening amongst you. And, and that's the culture that we've tried to generate at Eastgate. And, and with a degree of success where people say, yeah, we just want to come and sit in your cafe and work. And these are all sorts of business people. Our, our cafe is open to the, the, the general public. So we just like being here. Why? Oh, I don't know, but we can feel something here. We don't know what it is. Just the atmosphere here. 
And people come into our cafe and get healed just by sitting in our cafe. Why? Because they come and they touch God. There's something that gets stirred within them. Okay, so, <clears throat> and when you get that, then, uh, um, in other words, you could call it it's favor. What that does, it opens up opportunities for you to change the world. Do you want to be world changers? Well, this is key. Okay, so now turn with me to, to Psalm 65, okay? Psalm 65. <clears throat> Am I on the right place for you it's on the screen and everything? Am I doing all right in the moment? I'm going to be in a good boy at the moment. Psalm 65 says this, Praise awaits you, O God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. O you who hear prayer, to you all men will come. When you were, we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness. Okay? Awesome deeds of righteousness. And righteousness actually carries in it the potential to do awesome deeds. You right there. Awesome deeds await you. You think, who, me? I'm just, I'm just a Christian. Yeah, you're powerful. You've got the Holy Spirit inside you. Righteousness is not the same as forgiveness. And, and I, I want to, uh, so that's often people mistake that. I want to tell you, when you were born again, you were forgiven of all your sin. Okay? Now, this is, it's, got this, it's got this in this passage of, of Scripture. You've got, a, you've got a, a, a train of thought that actually leads you there. So actually it talks, when we were overwhelmed by our sins, you forgave our transgressions. So how did you enter into to the kingdom? By being born again. What did you need to do to be born again? You needed your sins forgiven. How much of your sin has been forgiven? All of it. Past? Present? Future? The future is the kind of bit that's, that's, that's more tricky to get your brain around. But if I make it as easy as this, Jesus died 2,000 years ago when all your sin was in the future. Yeah, <laughs> He's not surprised. He's, he, it's all forgiven. Now, that is extraordinary. That's what, that's what grace means. That, that, this is a level of grace. Thing. What, even, even if I deliberately do it, well, even then. We don't recommend it because sin is destructive, okay? Sin, sin, sin has consequences, it carries human consequences. But this is the grace of God that your sin has removed as you as far as the east from the west. And I was telling you leaders, it's, it's crazy to go on a sin search. If you commit sin, which you might do, repent. And what, what does God do? He restores you to purity. It says actually a fully righteous state. You are righteous people. <clears throat> okay, so we're overwhelmed by, by sins. Blessed are those you choose. Did God choose you? I was thinking, I, I, this, when we, we talk about preaching the gospel, sometimes a, 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 off, an often used phrase, I'm, I'm tempted to wander off there, so I'm going to have to be disciplined, um, is, um, do you want to invite Jesus into your life? I think it's a bad phrase. Why? He invites us into his life. It's like, do you want, hey, Jesus, do you want to come into this life and fix it? He says, no, I want to make you a new creation. <laughs> he doesn't do a redo. He's, he's not a fixer-upper. You know it's really important. Jesus didn't come to fix up your life. You were dead in your sin. Get used to it. Everybody equal plane. Yeah? Oh, well, I wasn't such a sinner as that person over there. No, you're just dead like everybody else. <laughs> In your sin, simple as that, oh, level playing field, and now you're alive. Isn't that great? And how alive are you? You have been called to the fullness of life, abundant life. And that, again, that has no limits because you explore it this far and there's still more to come. <laughs> it's beautiful. That's why Christianity should never be boring. If you're bored with your Christianity, then give yourself a quick slap. Come to grips with the fact that God's eternal and infinite. He's got something new for you every day. The mercies of God are new every morning. What's that mean? Do you need forg new forgiveness every morning? No, just got more stuff for you. Which is given to him because of his grace and kindness. He's, woo, coming to you. Not because you've earned it, but because he loves you. So he chose you. 
<laughs> he didn't make a mistake, by the way. He didn't choose you out of pity. He chose you because he loved you from the foundation of the world. And also, he's got a destiny for you which was planned out before the foundation of the world. He's got a life for you to live that is extraordinary beyond measure. And when we put all our lives together in the body of Christ, we will change the world. And eventually he will come back for his bride. It's a beautiful thing. So he chose us deliberately. And the ultimate aim is we will be with him forever as his bride. Is he coming back for a beautiful bride? Yeah. And only one. <laughs> he's, not coming at, he's not coming back for a denominational bride. He's got one bride he's coming back for. Some, some people ask me how big my church is. I say, well, I think it's about two billion. It's growing at about a million a week as far as I know, or maybe two million a week. It's my church. Now... Eastgate Church is different. It's got, it's got a local expression, but you have to, you're part of a, the bride of Christ. That's a privilege. Isn't it amazing? Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Wow, all chosen. <clears throat> what does he, he chose you and bring you near to live in your courts. What's our privilege is to live in God's presence. So you're forgiven. You're chosen, brought into a great life. Where do you live it? In the presence of God. Where are you seated? Seated with him in heavenly places. Jesus said, actually, we're not going to wait for eternity. We're going to come and make our home in you. All right? so, so the reality is, you know when Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you? You say, oh, sometimes it feels like it. Well, again, that can never be true. Because who have you got inside you? God. He's chosen you as his home, and we choose him as our home. And his presence is paramount. At least that's what we say. We want to be always presence-centered. We're organized, but we never want to be program-driven. We want to live according to how the Spirit leads us, guides us. And, and, and Jesus talks about wherever the wind blows, you follow it. We have a very simple, simple mantra uh, if you're a follower of Jesus, you go where he goes. And I've been saying to my church over the months, it's very difficult to assess how your Christianity has been through COVID, isn't it? Is, it tri- is that tricky? If I'm assessing my Christianity, I thought, not quite sure how I've done. <clears throat> is God with me? Yeah. And I, I said, and I said to folks, as long as Jesus is out there in front of you and you're, you're, you're following, you're, you're doing okay. That's the thing. Am I still following him? Yeah. Okay. You're doing all right. You're doing all right. We don't have many other frames of reference at the moment. Don't beat yourself up, please. He has never left you. He never will. He never forsake you. So <clears throat> you live with him. And then this, we're filled with the good things of your house. So what you get is the goodies of heaven. God is forgiven, chosen, brought into a new life. Live with him. Now what do you get? You get all the resources of his household available to you. And you see this repeatedly in, in the, the Bible sort of dialogue, the, the, um, uh, the story of the Bible. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, they were brought out of slavery. Did they come out as just paupers? No, they came out with all the riches they needed to build the, the things that God had put in front of them, the tabernacle. The same with Cyrus, king of Persia, when Ezra and Nehemiah went, you know, went back to rebuild the, you know, the, the, the temple and the city. You know, the, a pagan king made sure they had all the resources that they needed. You are not short of resources. You have all the resources of the household of God given to you and available to you. I'm a, I'm a medical doctor. Um, I, I lead a thing called Heaven in Healthcare, which is available to all, any healthcare worker. If you want to learn how to carry heaven into that environment, then connect with us, heaveninhealthcare.com. We've got a conference coming up at Eastgate, the 1st and 2nd of October. We just love equipping people. But what we're saying is... is, is in the human resources, the health service is really stretched. It is. It's worth recognizing. Massive, massive pressure. What have we got to offer as Christians? All the resources of heaven. What's that look like? Righteousness, peace, and joy. If you can create an atmosphere of peace and joy in a medical workplace, you transform it. 
And that's what I, I know. This is my life. I can tell you my testimony. I used to work up to 136 hours a week as a junior hospital doctor. And everywhere I worked, I was known as the happy doctor. Everywhere. Because I learned how to live in this reality of the peace and joy of God. You can have peace that guards your heart in any circumstance. If you could offer people peace of mind at the moment, do you think they'd be knocking on your door? Yeah. There's a massive mental health epidemic just stacked up. What, what have we got to offer into that? Come to Jesus. Peace that passes all understanding. And then you've got this awesome deeds of righteousness. Every one of you is awesome. I know God's the awesome one. <laughs> Within you is the potential <clears throat> for miracles beyond measure. John 14, 12, verse, John 14 verse 12 says this, anyone who has faith in me will do the works I've been doing, as Jesus said, and then even greater works. Wow. How many of you have got to do in the same works as Jesus? A bit of, how about starting to do the extra work? Now, I can tell you, I, I haven't got time to do this, what greater works look like, because I know what they look like, because I've seen it happen. You might say, well, how come you can claim that? I'm not claiming to be greater than Jesus, I'm just claiming to be walking with him, and then he's enabling me to do even greater works than he did on planet Earth. Is that not amazing grace? I, I marvel at the humility of God, that he would say, actually, Jesus didn't reserve the greatest works for himself. That is, I find it absolutely mind-bogglingly extraordinary. But that's the words of Jesus. They're not my words. Jesus said, actually, you're going to do greater works than me. We would never dare to claim that for ourselves, would we? Except it's in the Bible, and it's for you to walk in. Awesome deeds of righteousness. So, I've seen two people raised from the dead. <coughs> um, personally. Uh, and then, it has happened with others. Um, uh, in and around our Eastgate environment, at least one other, and then others. So we see, at Eastgate, we see probably thousands of miracles every year through, through our whole congregation at our, our supernatural school. Um, just regularly, we just hear them, week in, week out, week in, week out, in everyday life. Most of them don't happen in our building. <coughs> it's half past, I need to let people go for their kids, is that right? I've got a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm going to, I, I, I'll do one story, then I know those who've got to go get a kids to come up, and then I'm actually going to do some ministry with those who haven't got to go, and I'm not quite sure what you do with the kids, but I'm sure you'll get directions. Okay, <coughs> so if you've got time to stay in, stay online. Um, so uh, we have a healing centre at Eastgate that's basically set up on the premises of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So it's a very peaceful environment, it's a very joyful environment, it's deliberately so. It's a place where people can touch Jesus and get healed. Like the lady with the hemorrhage, that's, that's our simple uh, healing philosophy. We can get you to touch Jesus, you can get healed. Anyway, <laughs> there was, um, one day there was this lady there, and I was actually overseeing the, the, the healing center that day, and, and we were getting towards the end of our two-hour session, and um, a couple of people were praying with this lady, and, and she just started to laugh her head off in, in, in a way that you can't make up. You know, it, 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 it was just, she was completely lost in love. She went, ah! I thought, wow, this, this, something must have happened. And I was presuming that she'd been healed. There's a miracle. Now, you know. <laughs> Our team were looking a bit surprised by what was going on. With her. Not, not that we were surprised by laughter, but the, the extent of it was extraordinary. So I went over to see her. I thought, oh, I, I wanted to get in on the act. I wanted to see what the good news was. Get back in line, Pete. I don't go off camera. And, uh, <laughs> and I went over and I said, hey, what's happened to you? She says, ah! <laughs> All my sins have been forgiven. Oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. She said, I've been a Christian for 20 years. I didn't know my sins were all forgiven. Ah, it's amazing! <laughs> we were praying for a healing. So hold on a minute. You didn't come here for that, did you? See, see the kingdom isn't divided up into little bits. So we pray for it. And could we, don't, we just pray, God, come touch her, bless her. He knew what she needed. She was going on like this. Anyway, so what I thought, I, I, and she was happy. I, I, th I thought, I'm just going to bless what God's doing. So I put my hand on her back, and she started to do what I call the crunches. 
like she was in, in that, but she was doing it at a pace that was not natural. You know, it was like it was superhuman gym. You know, she, she, was, she was going up and down, up and down. And, and I, I'm just standing back, and the team were just watching her go. You know, it was, it was tiring just watching her. She go, Anyway, I thought, well, she's had a good time. And we then packed up, and, she, and I went down to the cafe afterwards. We had a cafe, and she was sitting down in the cafe. She said, um, I went over to see what she was doing. She said, what did you do to me? I said, you know, what do you mean? I said, well, that, well you were pushing me. So I said, no, I wasn't pushing you. I touched you once, and then I stepped back. She said, well, something was pushing me. And she said, what you need to know is I came with a bad back, and I can't do that. Well, you can, you can now. What happened? <laughs> Jesus knew what she needed. He touched her in a certain way so that she opened herself up for the next way. So I said, so how are you feeling now? She said, uh, well, I'm feeling really good. But back. I said, but my, my, my neck still hurts. I said, oh, okay. Would you like me to pray for that? So, so I said, um, yeah. She said, well, do you mind if I just put my hand on your neck? And I have to be careful. My wife's listening to this story. Yes, I and <laughs> so I put my hand on the neck. And she went, oh, that's lovely. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. I think I'm going to get myself in trouble in the cafe. Here. <laughs> went, oh wow! Oh. <laughs> and then within ten minutes, the neck was better. What did she meet? Righteousness, peace, and joy. What happened? She went out changed and whole. Why? Because we create an atmosphere where we believe God can do what he wants to do. And it's as simple as that. We're going to carry on doing a bit more of this, if that's all right. But I know if you've got kids, you need to slowly go and get them. And I don't know if they come allowed to stand at the back or whatever you want to do if you want the kids involved in this. But I'm not saying what you should do. I just don't know. So it's They have to wait outside. So if you want to, want to go and get your kids, <laughs> some of us in, so there's not many people going. But... Um, Seems like most of you are staying. Okay. <coughs> See, that, that story from the healing center is, a, is, is exemplifies for me what you do. You just touched Jesus. What did he do? He knew. I didn't, we, didn't, we didn't delve for this lady. Is your sin forgiven? Because hmm. Jesus is not going to heal you till you're forgiven. It's, that's nonsense. If you read the Bible, Jesus, Jesus didn't insist that people were forgiven before he healed them, did he? He didn't have an order that he did things. He just loved people. He didn't make it rules and regulations. He just doesn't do that. We make sure that when people come to our healing centre, they go out feeling loved if they've got nothing else. They go out with hope. We've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stories of healings. Cancer's gone. We've got cancer within this last few weeks. Extraordinary stories of cancer disappearing, of nerves being reconstructed. <coughs> And I believe this for your church, right? As I was with you yesterday. <clears throat> and I, I'm, I say this, uh, submitting it to you, but I believe, I believe you have an extraordinary opportunity ahead of you in the spirit. And I don't count it by what I can see in terms of human resources. Now, I'm impressed by your building. It's great. It's a great human resource. And in one sense, I'm, I'm loving seeing what you've got as a group of people. You've got something good going on here. But remember the story of, of um, Elisha with his servant when they were surrounded in, in the Dothan, when the, the enemies had come to get them, and the servant's really quite understandably worried. And Elisha says, no, let's not bother. There's more of us than them. Because Elisha could see into the unseen realm what God had already provided. Now, this is, this is really quite an important spiritual principle. He didn't ask God to help him. Okay, this is, this is really important. Elisha wasn't panicking because he could already see what had already been given. His servant couldn't see it. What did Elisha do? He said, open his eyes to see what is already available, what is already here. And as soon as the, the, the servant saw it, he knew he was on the winning side. How many blessings have you been given in Christ? Have you seen them yet? Does it mean to say they haven't been given? 
You've got to go from pleading with God to somehow help you out to realising the extent of what has already been given to you and the resources that are already available for you and you just need to open your eyes to see the full reality of that. God does not heal people by you pleading for it. He heals people by you using your authority. He gets rid of demons by doing that. There's a difference between... And God does not want us to be powerless in our mentality. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. So what do you become? Powerful. If you think you're not, what are you denying? You're denying the activity of God within you. That's not good, by the way. Okay? God wants to empower you right now with an anointing. Okay? And I want to release that anointing for you. Am I saying that proudly? No, I just know that God's given me something I can give away. And I know about healing and the miracles and faith. And what you've got, you can give away. And I feel right now, and I don't do this everywhere I go by any means, because I don't presume to, but I want to only give it where I believe it can be received. You know, when you, you, you give your peace to somewhere where it will rest. And if it doesn't, it, come, it comes back. But I think you're ready for this, Okay. You're up for it. So I want you to stand. So I want you to take your mind off anything that could be troubling you right now. And I want you to think of the world around you. Jesus looked out on the multitudes, and it says he had compassion on them. The number one thing you need is the heart of God for the nations. For the people around you, that's compassion. Father, and I release the compassion of heaven right now into people's lives. Father, I pray that you will touch their hearts in a way where they will never be the same again. Where they will never be able to be unaffected by the state of humanity around them. Jesus looked out and he saw the multitudes that were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. It's still the same. In that story in Matthew 9, he just healed all the sick who came to him. He said, actually, I can't do it on my own. Isn't that amazing? Jesus said, the workers are few. Pray for the workers in the harvest field. Father, I want to pray for the compassion of heaven to grip our hearts. The reason God heals the sick is because he loves them, not for a stage show. He doesn't do it to give you a great testimony. He does it because he loves people and wants them free. And Father, right now, I pray for the fire of heaven to come and touch everyone in this place and all of those online because the love and the power of God are combined together. The Bible says that you might have power to grasp how high and wide and deep is the love of God. So Father, I pray now for a release of the fire of heaven. Ow! I pray for the lightning of heaven to be released in this place right now. And Father, I thank you for the gifts of the Spirit. And I want you to ask for the gifts right now. You've probably got used to prophecy, you've got used to tongues. Eagerly desire greater gifts. And I want you to now ask for the gift of healing, faith, and miracles. They're all in this 1 Corinthians 12. I want you, because you need the three of those things together to do what I'm saying, talking about. I ask for the gift of healing. I ask for the gift of miracles. Wow! And ask for the gift of faith that will enable you to pursue that lifestyle. Yo!
If you ask, you will receive. If you ask, you will receive. It's a promise of God. It's because of Jesus' death on the cross. It's, that's the guarantee of this stuff. It's not your performance. Not by rules and regulations. You'll do it because he loves the world around you and he loves you and he wants to use you. But I pray that this church would see hundreds of miracles of healing within the next year. I pray that this building will be a place where people find and come to because they know that they can come here and touch the living God. I pray that heaven will become resident in this place. I pray that you give wisdom to this church to know how to steward the resources of heaven and the presence of God in such a way that your resident presence is here. I pray for your glory to be manifest in this place. Eastgate has had a, a, a manifestation of the glory of God in it for the last six years. This very specific manifestation of the glory of God. And I've started to see signs of that around here. Whoa! And this is instruction, encouragement to you. I want you to learn to be unoffended by the activity of the Holy Spirit. It's a strange thing to say. He does strange things. Don't judge one another by externals. All right, I want to say, we're not called to be manifestation police. We're called to marvel at the signs and wonders that he puts in front of us and embrace his awesome presence. So keep receiving. Whoa! <laughs> Father, I release a greater healing anointing upon this church than they'd ever dreamt of. God wants to do more than you would ask or imagine. The phone number I've got, and I'm actually I'm not going to do it all, I'm just going to do the last six numbers. It ends in 817931. 817931. And God, what? Whoever that is, God says he knows your circumstances and he's about to break in. 817931. There's also somebody who lives at house number 73 and God is going to give you an opportunity of interaction with your neighbours within this next two weeks which, where you're going to be able, uh, you'll have the opportunity to demonstrate the kingdom of heaven and the power of heaven into their lives, into their circumstances, that will have a dramatic effect, not just upon that household, but upon the whole neighborhood. So if you live at house number 73, just want you to take hold of that. Yo! Whoa! Yeah, you got it at the back there. I've forgotten your name. It's Caroline, is it? Yeah, I've been forgotten. Paul, Nick. Father, fly them right now. I see the Holy Spirit resting upon you in an extraordinary way. And you, whoa! Right now, he's going to take you to a whole other level of the power of heaven being released through you. And things that you've dreamt of and dreamed of for years are actually now going to become your reality. You're going to start to step into that which has been stored up in your heart for... I, would, I think God's saying, about the last 10 years, there's something that's been stored up in your heart, and right now, the breakthrough moment is coming for you. And it's going to affect you. It's going to build into this life of this church. God is going to give you a, a, a weight of heavenly significance that's going to, going to affect, I would say, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. Yep, you can have it as well. Yo! <laughs> Remember, laughter's, laughter's joy. I thought I'd re pray for a release of joy in this place. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Not a bit of fluff around the edges. <laughs> I should come in your way. This is what Kim, God is anointing you right up now. <laughs> He's about to shake you upside down and inside out, okay? And you're going to say, 
I never dreamt I'd do that. <laughs> Can you just grasp your husband's hand? You're, you're allowed to do that one. I know that, that that's not that's okay. So, I want, Kim, I just want you to pray for your husband and release what you got to him right now. It's Dave, isn't it? Go on, go for it. No! If you're with somebody you can touch, can you just do that? You know, if you're allowed to. I'm not saying don't reach out to people you don't know. Because what, what, what the, the secret of the kingdom is that you give away what you get. Okay? Now, if you can't touch somebody, what I want you to do is project what... Project what you've got to somebody else, deliberately around the room, think, okay, I'm focusing my, my spiritual energy and attention upon those people, and I'm choosing to bless them with the resources of heaven, okay? Can you do that? I want you to release the resources of heaven that are yours. I want you to get used to releasing the resources, and, and you don't have to touch people to do it, okay? It, it sometimes helps, but you don't, it, you know, Jesus healed people remotely, all right? No! So, so just now, right now, release, you, here in this place, on, on the screen, release the resources of heaven. And, and then, get to this place, every one of you, I'm pretty certain every one of you will know somebody who's sick. Okay, it, it, it could, every one of you probably here knows somebody who's sick. I want you now to, to, to start to proclaim healing into that person who's come to your mind. Okay, okay, I want you to start. You, you are powerful people. You have authority in the kingdom. Okay, now I want you to think. Okay, right. In the, in the Bible, it talks about ask God to stretch out his mighty hand. Okay, uh, ask God to stretch out his mighty hand and touch the person. And there can be more than one, okay? No! No! Jesus. Wow. Yep. Father, I pray for more power to be released right now. Whoa. There's a lady there, and you're in a dress. It's green, white, and black stripes going around with black. That's you, yeah. God's just coming upon you. He's anointing you very specifically. Uh, for something that's also been in your heart for a number of years. And uh, there's a difference between just, just receiving generally and an anointing that comes specifically. So anointings are, are, are specific for purpose. And right now God is anointing you for a specific purpose that's part of your divine destiny and that you, you've not been able to walk into up to this moment in your life. And I'm not sure if it's been a source of frustration or just an ongoing desire, but right now God's giving you a breakthrough in that and the power is, and the anointing is coming upon you where that, that, <clears throat> that dream is going to come into a fruitful uh, reality. <sighs> Where's Mornay? Oh, there you are over there, Mornay. God's just come into you, my friend. I'm aware of your circumstances. <clears throat> but I believe God's saying that you are a mighty man of God. That you have a humility and a gentleness 
the aspects of the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> but they're not a lack of power. And God wants to release dynamic into your, uh, your life, which will add something in, in terms of the miraculous in a new dimension. And God, I believe God says, when you teach people in the power of the Spirit, I want you to expect the activity of God to be happening while you're teaching. Your teaching is not just going to be with wise words, <clears throat> not persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. That's what Paul said. You know. Did not come to you with wise, just wise and persuasive words. Now, God has given you wise and persuasive words, but he's now <coughs> pulling you into a, a demonstration of his power. Because it says this, that, that our faith might not rest on those things, but on the demonstration of the power of God, knowing that God is a powerful thing. Your preaching is going to become more powerful and you're going to be surprised what God will do with you. And I believe God's saying, don't be frightened to start to move in, in, in words of knowledge and prophecy as part of your preaching. I believe he's adding that dimension of prophecy, prophetic anointing in, into that teaching gift that you already have. And that's going to equip not just this church, but we use to actually bless others as well. Whew, I'll probably bring this to a close, isn't I? I'd like to pray for you two. All three. It's all right. I'm, you can stay. Stay in. Um, <coughs> been staying with these guys, so we appreciate them greatly, but also uh, just uh, the, the, the leadership gift that's upon them. And I'd like you to join me in praying for them. And... Uh, Particularly through a season like this, and, and when you're going through change, and the, the, I'll take this for all your leaders. I know I don't just pick up one leader. I don't believe a church has one leader. That's not, not the model that I, I work with. But um, I just believe for these, these guys right now, God is going to do something extraordinary. And uh, your next 10 years is going to be beyond measure. Father, I want to thank you for this dear couple, for this dear family, and I pray right now for the anointing of heaven to rest upon them. That they would enter into a season of fruitfulness. This next decade is going to be a life, <coughs> an incredible adventure and journey that will thrill your hearts and fulfill you in a way that you didn't think was ever possible. You're always safe in the hands of leaders who are desperate for Jesus. Who are willing to pursue the next step forward. It takes courage. It really does. And I want to, again, I can commend the leaders of this church for the courage that we've already exhibited. <coughs> and I, See it, see it in the spirit right now. You're, you're no longer on the runway, but you've actually taken off. And it, you're not high in the air yet, but you're starting to climb. And then you're going to... You will be flying. 
And uh, the other analogy, you're going to fly on, on wings like eagles. And it's not going to take a lot of effort, but it does take a deliberation to get up there. An eagle works to get up, but once it's up there, it, 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 it just it soars and it sees things from a whole new perspective. And I believe that's what God has put in front of you as a church. Thanks for giving me more time. I'm going to hand back to Duncan now. And uh, <coughs> Kim, Kim and I'd love to say thanks for having us, wouldn't we? It's been a great pleasure. And uh, <laughs> that was fair handing it back to me. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> so if you exit the building, I feel like now I should be like one of those um, <laughs> stewards. <laughs> you exit the building this way or this way. Uh, and um, God's good, isn't he? He's on us. He's with us. Let's just keep journeying together. So bless you guys at home. And uh, let's keep processing what he's doing with us. And enjoy, enjoy some time in the car park. Enjoy the afternoon's sunshine. Bless you for coming out. God bless you. And thank you, Pete and Kim. Thank you for... Uh, giving yourselves to us this weekend, so appreciate you guys, thank you. So can we just thank them once again? Yeah.